Those are fun, fun fantasies for sure. So I am still making this tree. I got way too many layers, right? But I'm not going to just use this tree outright, though it is pretty cool. I am going to erase away from it and blend one organic texture into another. You can do this with rocks. You can do it with trees. You can do it with grass. And I'm doing it with a 100% soft edged large eraser. So I've said that a few times, 100% soft edged large eraser. And what I'm first obliterating are those hard edges, these cutout lines. Make sure they are completely gone. As you start working back with your reference. And I can be fairly aggressive because I have other trees underneath this. Kind of pick up any slack. And it seems like I'm not erasing away at 100%. That's just because it's revealing the layers that are underneath. The key is always to have a lot of overlap. So there's something to show when you erase. That makes sense. And if you just don't have good, good material in that layer, you just want to composite in something else or downplay that layer. So the reason we start with compositing landscapes is they're actually compared to characters or props or vehicles, especially they're actually incredibly forgiving. So this is easy mode in terms of compositing, which is why people who composite settings are expected to do a lot of different versions of different ideas very quickly to pitch for whatever the project might be. If you notice that the program starts to lag on you a little bit, just go ahead and hit Command S and save. We're using a lot of layers. Yeah, this is the eraser, soft edged, 100% opacity. And I can use that on these other layers too for the tree because some of them just terminate at points that are too regular. And there's a lot of good content behind it, so I don't need to worry about erasing it. All right, this tree. And then you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to play with its coloring with direct adjustments. So image adjustment levels and it darken a little bit. And now I go in aggressively. And erase certain parts away. especially just colors or highlights that just don't match. But I like some of that greenery. Let's see. So if I want to keep some of the green, this is a nice technique. Let's get rid of this ghosted stuff. What I do is I go to hue saturation under image adjustments. And under master color, I change it to just the greens. And I can adjust the, the hue, the spectrum of the color, for just the greens in this layer. 
So to show you, here's the saturation. You see it's just affecting those greens. I'm just going to take that and saturate it down. Change the hue to be a little bit more bluish. Then I'm going to go to the yellows. This is just in the one layer. Come on. I'll use my trackpad. See that? I'm going to take that saturation way down and I'm going to darken those yellows. So now this looks like kind of a ghostly tree in the moonlight, right? Okay, good. Next layer. <laughs> this plant, which looks totally out of place. So before I cut it out, play with levels. Play with limiting the highlights. Play with color balance. First with the mid-tones, going to push it away from the greens. Towards the blues and cyans. Highlights. More magenta. And you get better at this with practice, adjusting colors, shadows, a little bit more red, a little bit more blue. And next, hue saturation. I'm just going to take the intensity down. That's looking better. Shift the hue back and forth, see if that makes a difference. Oh, I got to change it from yellow back to master. Then if I want to, I can just select the yellows and mess with those. Maybe darken them a little. Okay, now this is easier to cut out because you can see its shadows and stuff are matching a little bit better. So I'm going to try my magic wand with contiguous turned back on. Get these chunks around these big leaves. And hold down shift. That's going to be tough, so let's see. Yeah, I'll keep doing it. Because those pinks are pretty different than the green. Pinks and purples. I don't need all of it. Oops. Because something's covering this up in the foreground. So now I'm going to delete, 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 because I got the feathering. Cuts it out. There might be little debris, but I can live with that. That feathering helps a lot. And then anything I need to do with my lasso, I can just go in and do. Because it's organic, I can just draw the shape I want. Okay, next. A big rock. I've rasterized it. Turn on my guides. See how I was thinking of composing this. I think maybe there makes sense. And I'm just going to play with its levels. And actually brighten it a little bit and then darken its shadows so that rock really comes forward. Now when I go to color balance, I'm going to see how much I can affect its colors, starting with the midtones. And you can see on gray things, color balance, and white things, color balance actually makes the biggest difference. Because those grays and whites are actually made with color. So if I push it more towards yellow or more towards red, you can really see that shift. And if I move the shadows more towards blue and really contrast the highlights versus the shadows, it will look like it's in the foreground the most. Like that. 
I don't think I have to play with saturation yet, but if I wanted to, I could just go to adjustment, hue saturation, and just intensify it a little bit. Even though it's gray, there are colors there that can be intensified. And I can, I'm just doing it with the yellow. Got to go back to master again. But I can play with the overall hue. Kind of get it where I'm comfortable. Okay, next. These flowers. I already cut them out, kind of, with the lasso along this edge but I really need to adjust their colors, right? So, still gonna be these pink flowers. I just need to get them to look like they're under the right condition. And that's gonna be limiting their highlights under this night sky and then adjusting their color balance to have a lot more blue, a lot more cyan. more green in their shadows. Maybe not that much green. You don't want to go more than halfway in any one direction. Or it gets a little too intense too quickly. Oh, that's getting there. All right, next, hue saturation. Take down the overall intensity of them and just shift their spectrum a little bit to the right or left, and it looks like to the right is going to be on the money. And now I can cut them out in a way that's a little bit more forgiving. Just using my lasso with its two pixel feather. It's kind of psychedelic flowers overlapping everything else. Remember, good use of Photoshop means good selecting. And something we're learning is how to use feathering. All right, save my progress there. And I'm almost ready, almost done. Just have this this one to do. Now this is a good example because everything's blue. But if I use my magic wand and I use a tight tolerance, let's just do 12, contiguous. And if I'm on the right layer, it should help me cut it out. Now, notice it's selected a lot inside that I don't want it to delete. So what I do is I use my eraser at 100%, pressure sensitive with a tablet, and I just use that as a stencil to cut away just from this top edge. And it might be cutting away too much, but let's see. No, it looks pretty good. So then I go in and I tighten it up and I can use my lasso to remove little fragments. But I wanted it to look kind of like crystalline rock candy and I think it does. Kind of cool. Okay, so then I'm going to use my, my lassoed selection. Instead of just hitting delete, I'm going to then use my eraser again, soft edged, so I can blend. And then I'm just tempted to move this rock on top. That doesn't quite work. So let's move it like this. And then just be aggressive with my lasso. Decide what edge of this crystal I want to keep. And then use my eraser instead of hitting delete. So I can just, whoops, wrong layer. Remember, you can move selections between layers. Come on, move. There we go. There we go.
Yes.